Okay. <laughs> Keep that oh, same energy. Well, let's get started with the first question. So this first question is for all of you. You don't all have to answer. Whoever feels compelled, you just jump in. Uh, so what will it take to break the male gender mold, and how do each of you plan to utilize your platform for change? Um, I can tell you, I think we're all just doing it. Like, I think that there's really no specific formula to it. I think if you look at all of us on this stage, and so many people out there who are already doing that just by being themselves. And I think that's the coolest thing about what we all represent is just being who you are, expressing who you are, and not being ashamed of that, and not letting anybody else's judgment take that away from you. Thanks. Right on, right on. I think, just to add to that, I think men need to realize that masculinity and femininity, it's like, it's connected 100%. So uh, everything else has just been fabricated and created by other people that don't really know what they're talking about. We can actually, all of us, no matter who you are, can be anything that you want. We get to decide who and what we are. So that's what we're all doing, that's what you guys are doing, that's the yes. point. For sure. Okay, so question number two. This is for Jonathan. First of all, congrats on your two Emmy noms. Oh. Killing it. You deserve you. everything you get. Seriously. Thank you so much. Love um, you guys too. <laughs> so you have been open about struggling uh, from adolescence to conform to the stereotypical expectations of masculinity. How do you support your fan base to accept themselves and reject society's male standards? Well, you know, that's a gorgeous question. And I think for me, um, so much of where we've walked in our past informs like who we are now. And so when we've struggled to conform to someone's expectation of who we need to be, that creates a lot of scar tissue in the past. So I think it's really important to like extend that nurturing self-love to like all of the different versions of every bit of yourself that you've been that have led you up into this point. And just really give that part of your, or all those parts of yourself love and acceptance. Cause like, honey, it is a nightmare out here. And you just gotta like love yourself through it. Cause we've all just been through a lot. Thanks. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Period. <laughs> okay, so the next question is for Jay. Huh? So social media has not only given you a platform to make your followers smile and cackle, but it's also offered you a space to express yourself. How has your channel allowed you to redefine your masculinity, self-acceptance, especially as a man of color? Um, I feel like before I was making videos, there were so many labels like, you have to be a man. Like, there's so much ruse on like being a man. You don't know you didn't choose to be born. So like I was, it was so much things being put on me. And then I feel like when I started making videos and people started like telling me to be more of myself, I started getting more comfortable with myself. And I just started playing around. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gay. So um, let me just play with both sides of the <laughs> feminine and masculine. So now I'm just like, whoever I want to be, if I want to be, I just, I'm just free. So I'm just like, I use that to like, I don't know, I push that. That's what I try to push. Be whoever you want to be. You could be so many characters. That's what I like about being gay. You can just be whoever you want to be <laughs> any day. You know, straights, they got to be this one person. Like, uh, I, I, I want to be I, like, I, I, don't know, I don't know, bro. Oh, wait, no. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> Masculine, okay, masculine men. They well, gotta be mad. Society, what is told, he? society has made straight people believe they have to be a certain way as well. So everyone's, we're all just yeah. everyone's confused. But yeah. I'll be whoever I want to be, period. I want to be your um, iridescent highlighter. Because it's so beautiful. I got highlighter. Honey, this highlighter. Yes. Like, I just want to like, I want to be your highlighter. It is yes. so beautiful. It's mixed with sweat. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's amazing, and I think it's really important that you've decided to like lean in and be who you are because clearly so many people relate to who you are, and again, like representation is everything, so it's super important. Exactly, like I'll play a girl, I'll play a guy, I'll just do whatever I want. And you do a, you do a damn good job at all of Thank it. Thank you, so. period. <laughs> so the next question is for all of you. Are there other men and women in entertainment that you think are using their voices and platforms to help create changes as you look at generals? I think being a part of the beauty industry, there's so many guys that wear makeup now, and I feel like every beauty man a guru out there is one of those people who are trying to step out the mode of like having an image of just one image of like what masculinity is, and I think yeah, men in makeup is doing that. I love yeah. yes. Like, 
I, and it's cool to see because like five years ago, there wouldn't be that many guys in this room. Yeah. Facts. Uh, yeah. Totally. And um, like, and it's so cool that like we have BeautyCon, which beauty is usually for women, and there's like guys here like everywhere with makeup, everybody. without makeup, or even the guys that are here with their girlfriends. I think that's really amazing. And I, where are the guys yeah. at? Guys, make some noise. <laughs> Ooh, <masculine. laughs> I think for, I mean, she's not, uh, she's an actress, but Kristen Stewart, like, yes, take the heel off. You don't need to work that red carpet at Cannes and a heel if the men aren't doing it. I think, um, I love what she stands for and what she brings to her platform. And so, yeah, gorgeous. Awesome. So uh, this next question is for Bretman. Yes. So your videos keep it real. How do you stay true to yourself and your beliefs amidst societal pressures and still do it with a smile? Um, well, I live on like literally a rock for like population of four people. So I never really actually ever cared about like what people thought about me because there's two people <laughs> that hates me in the island. So I never like, so yeah, that's why a big part of my content as to like why um, I'm very carefree is because I don't think anyone cares. Like honestly, because like at home I was wearing like bikinis to school when I was in fifth grade. And like when I got like, when I got a little bit of attention from social media, it didn't really change anything because I've always been like that bitch and I've always been a bitch to everyone. And I never, and I've, yeah, and like, like everyone else, I've always had bullies, but like, they're ugly. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just like, a big part of it is just do things with a smile, like you said, and as long as you're happy with doing what you're doing, then girl, and I'm making girl. money as well, so. Yes, you making money. Wait, show us a smile. Give him a smile. <laughs> Sorry, I'd be pressed. <laughs> okay, so the next question is for Keenan. Well, congrats on your MTV Movie Award. Thank you. And your speech and your outfit were to die for, seriously. Um, so your speech was very impactful. And uh, where did you find the support and acceptance you needed to embrace who you truly are? I have a beautiful friend group, um, beautiful family, but also mostly it had to come from myself. Like, and also the other thing that really helped me with my journey was like going on social media and seeing um, people younger than me like embracing who they were. And then I was like, oh, right. <laughs> like, what am I holding myself back from? But ultimately like, I realized I needed to care for myself, my soul, and that literally nothing else matters but, but, but living your truth. Like there's just not enough time and in the world for us to be anything other than ourselves. It's pointless. Yeah. Well, I do have a follow-up question to that. How do you practice self-care? Um, I practice self-care by living in the truth of the moment. Like, I can't pretend, like, a lot of the time I'm pretty happy and stoked on life. But then I could go through a month where I'm just, for whatever reason, going through different changes, and I have to look at that and go, like, you know what? I'm down today. I'm sad. I'm a little negative. And that's okay. I know that's not the real me. That's just the thoughts and I'm just gonna learn what I'm supposed to learn along the way. Like, if I mess up, it literally doesn't matter unless I think it matters. So we decide our fate. We decide if we're gonna be good to ourselves on a good day or a bad day or all days. Like, we choose. Love it, love it. So this is for everyone. You've taken social media by storm with an incredible following on YouTube and Instagram. How do you wish to influence your followers? For me, I really feel like I want to push my people to be their, their entire selves. I think a lot of people even out here like really aspire to have a great personal brand or kind of be up here where we are right now. And a lot of times we find ourselves emulating people that are where we want to be as opposed to embracing everything that's in us, right? So like me, I really love anime and I also really love fashion. But like for straight guy fashion, it's like super serious. Everybody's like hella serious. You know what I'm talking about, right? But anime doesn't take itself seriously at all. So I'm okay, if I put these two things together, what will happen and if I just embrace who I am and that's like really grew my Instagram following like nothing close to what you guys got going on but like that's kind of my thing right so yeah. like embracing like those two things two sides of me really like led to my truth truly finding myself and actually everybody else embracing me too so that's what I really want to really influence people to do to embrace their whole selves no matter what their like influence or people they look up to are doing you got to do what you want to do Rad. anyone else um, yeah I mean I think I actually forget the question. Um, how do you want to influence our following? Yeah, how, do you, okay. how do you wish to influence your followers? Um, I just want anyone who follows me at a bear named Troy 
Two, just know that they can be whoever they want to be as long as they're not causing harm to somebody else or harm to themselves. And I think if that becomes the issue, that's when it's time to talk to somebody, seek help. But other than that, I just want anyone who watches me on my page just to feel like they're empowered to be however they want to be deep down inside, whether that's feminine, whether that's masculine, whatever those things mean to them, they should just feel free to be however they want to be. I take the um, Beyonce, I was here approach to my, uh, to my social media. I just really want to leave it better than I found it. Like whether that's like the world, my page, your attitude, your feeling about yourself. Um, I just like want to try to leave it better than I found it. And that's not easy because sometimes we slip up. Like sometimes you'd be reading something on Twitter that makes you mad and you want to talk about it. And then you're like, whoop. You know, so it's just like about finding a balance. And um, I think that like grooming and self-care and social media, like it's really this like journey that like should be fun. So if you find yourself like beating yourself up over like what's on your social media or your grooming or your self-care, it's like take a bit off the fast box. It's like meant to be fun. I guess this. Oh, I love you guys too. Um, in terms of just like things that you've posted that you felt inclined to post, and then like seeing the comments or seeing the reaction from people that, and it was something that you didn't necessarily expect. Like, have you ever been? Have you ever wanted to like delete anything, or have you ever had to like second guess? Like, wait, should I have posted that? <laughs> uh, a lot, uh, actually. <laughs> A lot. Um, at the end of the day, we're all humans, and I feel like we all um, have different way of thinking. And some people might disagree with your way of thinking, or I might not agree with like everyone's way of thinking. So um, I feel like as long as you're doing things and you think you think things through, and you're not hurting anyone, then you're good. I feel like. But there are times where like you do tweet something that's kind of insensitive to other people, maybe not particularly to you. Yeah. But, and, and it, it, yeah, you know how internet goes. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So this question's for Troy again. So um, how important is it to you to inspire your followers to be proud of their bodies at any size? Um, I think growing up for me, I didn't always love my body. And I think that's why seeing where I've come to at this point of inspiring people to love their body at any size is so important to me because I didn't always have that, that within me to love myself. And I think when I got to this point, I'm going to tell you guys a really quick little story. I like used to work at this hotel in Pennsylvania and we used to work, our hotel was right down the street from QBC. And there was this family, a very famous family that would come into our hotel and they would sell their clothes on QBC and I would help them to their bags to their rooms and it's crazy because back then I didn't know who I was I didn't love myself I didn't feel confident in who I was and I had these dreams I didn't know how to go for them like go after them and then when I finally realized I can just do it and I could be who I wanted to be and I could go for it I'm now sitting on a stage with you guys right before Kim Kardashian West who I helped bring her bags to her room wow. so I just want to put it out there like you can do anything you want to do. You just have to get out of your own way. You have to believe in yourself and love yourself, and every door will open for you. So that's my little story. The glow up. I love it. <laughs> this question is for Devin. You've said that you aren't interested in being an influencer, but what motivates you to inspire others? I will correct that and say I'm not interested in being just an influencer. Just okay? an influencer. I think a lot of us have layers. We're not just like yeah. a person on a screen, right? Like you have other talents and other things to you. So what really inspires me is like when I see the feedback from other people. Like for me, like right now, I've only been on YouTube for like a year. So like I only have maybe like two or three videos that have gone viral recently. Like one is starting to go. Dudes are brutal. I'm not sure what y'all experience has been on YouTube and the comments and all that. But like when it comes to like dudes in fashion, they don't agree with you. They'll just like call your mom. They'll call you like everything just like all the way down the road. So like really dealing with like all the negativity, but then I have like overwhelming positivity. Because for me, I talk about like body issues for like just like straight. Do. So that's something that we really, really don't talk about because it's kind of hard to do. So I try to do it like in a tone that's like lighthearted and like, but straight 
straightforward, but lighthearted and like, you know, just give you the tools to be like, look, man, like, I'm like overweight, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm like 20 pounds overweight right now. And you're like, no, you're not, I know, I know. But like, everybody has their thing, right? So I just try to make it a safe space for guys to talk about it. So when the gym bro comes in, they're like, oh, you should just work out. It's like, whoa, time out. This guy has cancer. This guy's depressed, you know what I mean? Like, so like, it inspires me when I see other folks like beat everybody down for me, like, shut up. Like, you have no idea what you're talking about, so. Yeah. That, that's what really inspires me, like I the people say, that stand up. That's so cool that you offer that space to straight men. Like that's a really, I think, underserved space. I think a lot of men suffer from body issues just as much as women do. So I think the fact that you offer a space for people to come to who wouldn't maybe subscribe to what we do as far as like on our end of whether it be in the gay world or whatever it is, I think it's so cool that you offer a space for that's really cool. Absolutely. And it's definitely for all men, but like I just, guys look at me like, oh yeah, I can listen to this guy because I don't know, whatever. Yeah, I love what you do. I, I mean, I was watching all your videos, and I was like, I'm learning so much. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it's great. <laughs> um, so this last question is for everyone. So when you hear the word masculine, what does that mean to you? And can you be both masculine and feminine outside of one's gender identity? I think it takes a real man to know how strong it is to cry and be vulnerable and share his true emotions. Like, that's masculinity, is knowing that you are feminine. Masculinity is knowing you are a feminine being and a masculine being. That's strength. That's being proud of that, owning that. That's a, that's a man. That's a woman. That's everyone. They, each, and, each and every one of us. Non-binary. It's like we all have these beautiful assets to ourselves. We constantly are repressing. We don't need to. There's no point. We're just supposed to thrive in that human awareness and energy. That's it. That was really nice. Jay. Oh, me? Yeah. What was the question again? <laughs> When you hear the word masculine, what does that mean to you? And can you be both masculine and feminine? Um, when I hear the word masculine, I just don't know what it is. Like, cause I'm not, I don't, I don't know if I'm, I don't know. Like, I'm just, I don't classify myself as masculine or feminine. I'm just like equally just fluid in both ways. Fluid, yeah. So, what was the other one? That was it. Oh can no, it was both, like, can you be both masculine and feminine? Oh yeah, you feminine? can be both masculine and feminine. Like. Do whatever you want. Like, I'm masculine and feminine. Look at me. I'm totally fine. Um, I think. You are. You're um, gorgeous. Yes, You're yes. serving. You're doing the most. And yes. Um, I think it's like I would take it one step further and say that, like, we are all masculine and feminine. It's not can you be. It's like you literally are. Uh, you have no choice. Like, we are all born into this world is like you were saying, like, people that... We have so many layers and there's very many facets and like in Egyptian like times they there's like something like, like something about like two spirited or maybe it was some like culture it was like it's fierce it's gorgeous everyone's dual spirit everyone's got a little bit of both period oh I totally agree I think that I have this mentality in my brain of like masculine is not really a word I subscribe to or not subscribe to it's very similar to what you guys are all saying it's like I just don't think of it having any real meaning. I think that the ideas of masculine and feminine are sort of these like outdated like like line in the sand. Yeah, it's all very superficial. It's all not really what I think matters anymore. So I think I've lost those those ideas in my head and I've just decided to be Troy and I'm just going to be however that means I'm going to be. So if I'm going to wear a red heel, but a denim jacket, and it's like I don't I don't even think about what is masculine and feminine. I just I just do me, which I think everyone should just do is just do them. Yeah, I, I agree with everyone. I feel like you can't really define masculinity, and it is very superficial. Because when you hear the word masculine, you automatically think just, like, image-wise, you, you could identify someone masculine by just looking at them. And I think it goes far beyond what you see. And, um, yeah, I feel like um, before I started lifting weights or before I gained weight, I was always... People thought I was just skinny, and then I gained like 10 pounds, and not, which is not even that much. And then they're like, wow, what a mask queen, mask for mask. And I'm like, I'm more feminine than I ever was. If anything, I put on more foundation than I ever did. <laughs> I'm, just lift, I'm just like stronger now. I don't think I'm any less feminine or masculine at all. I feel like I'm just whatever. I'm just whatever I feel like doing that day. If I want to throw on titties, I'll throw on titties, and if I want to throw on like um, weights, I'll throw on weights. <laughs> so, I just do whatever I feel like. Devin? Well, when it came to this question, I really just looked at the definition of what masculine is, and it's like 
the traditional things that have to do with like what a man is, but the key word is traditional, right? Like the fact that we're even up here in the first place breaks tradition. The fact that y'all out here screaming every time Brevin speaks is breaking tradition. Like that's the whole point. So that's, it's old. It just doesn't matter anymore. Totally. Right. So I already asked Keenan um, sort of how he practices self-care. I'd love to go down the line and just sort of end on a high note of how everyone practices self-care and how you stay sane Ooh. in this crazy world, you know? Ooh. I always like t talking in the mirror. Oh my God, y'all should just try it. Try talking in the mirror and just like, just give yourself motivation. Even if you don't even believe the stuff you're telling to yourself, like even if it's like your worst insecurities, just constantly talk to yourself in the mirror. I always do that. Um, I always buy myself flowers. Like, yes. I bought myself flowers yesterday and self care, right? Yeah. Um, I eat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> make sure I'm cared in that, man. Yeah, and I make money. <laughs> awesome. What about you, John? For me, it's like I, living in the world is like a stressful place. There's like traffic. There's like the news. There's like the, all the things that we have to filter. So for me, like yoga really brings it back to center. Going to the gym really brings it back to center. Anything where like I can make my brain make some endorphins and some gorgeous like other chemicals that your brain makes when you work out. And that just like exercises the demons that, that you incur from living in this, this crazy place called Earth, honey. What about you, Troy? Um, <laughs> so personally, I make it a point to spend like an hour a night watching like Great British Baking Show. Oh. Like oh. Pops. That Something show's lit. If you guys don't watch that, you're so wrong. It's so relaxing. Great British Baking Challenge on the Netflix. Sweetest, the sweetest people on that show. So, so I watch good. that. I have like a bag of white cheddar popcorn and a glass of wine and that is like my hour with no phone, nothing. I'm just disconnected because I feel like I'm always connected. Yeah. And that's I think the, th the part of me that needs to like chill the fuck out so totally Bretman um for me I I yeah I do a lot of self-care I think a big a big self-care that I do is just staying in the islands I think it keeps me very sane and grounded I've been known for like a, quite a bit now and I think and it's like I said like it's like population of four people so everyone that wanted to meet me has already met me at this point in the islands so I'm seen as a regular and um, I try to stay off my phone as often as I can as well. If I'm jogging out, I just bring my iPod with me and leave my phone. Um, sometimes I would even leave my phone at home and go to the gym and like just come back. I think it's just like little things like that, just like to keep unplugged here and there. I think it's really good. Unplugging, yeah. Yes. Great advice. X. I think for me it's date night. That's really big for me. I like, I like taking that time, because my wife doesn't like me with my phone. I, like when we're with each other, she's like, put your phone away, we, we're eating dinner right now. Like, and I'm actually really bad at it, but I'm working on it. So that's one thing. I think a second thing would be watching anime. Like, it's my only hobby. I don't play sports. I don't go to the gym. I just watch anime and, like, Ooh. eat noodles. That's all I really do. Anime and noodles. That's it. Dope. Well, thank you all so much. That's wrapping up the panel. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you.